And we, oh, here it says the broadcast is live. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, we have a special guest for our February uh, speaker. Uh, it is George, none other than George Farmer, who is actually coming to us from England. Uh, and uh, it is 4 a.m. over there, correct, George? <laughs> That's right. And, yeah. Yeah. and uh, George just recently, and I want to point this out, uh, came out with this book aquascaping uh it was just recently uh published and uh and then uh, just before we came on george was talking about like when everything is hopefully lifted he will be coming around on a tour and hopefully uh we're hoping that he would be able to swing by us here in the bay area and um and we'd be able to meet up with him in person but he is a renowned aquascaper known for his youtube channel and uh well um i think i've been talking enough but uh george uh <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me, guys. It's uh, although we can't see each other physically and, and meet each other, we can at least do this. You know, use technology, and I'm I'm really grateful for that opportunity. So thanks, guys. Um, I can't hear you. Actually, can can anyone hear me? Are you muted? Um, I oh, can no. hear you. Oh, I can hear you now. That's okay. It just went super silent. I was just oh, was okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay. I've been talking, but um, yeah, yeah, no worries. <laughs> Good. Yeah, the smooth flow of uh, being live right now. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, cool. but uh, yeah, George. Uh, I know uh, before you start taking uh, some questions that uh, from the YouTube, uh, I think we you know would love to hear about just a little bit of background, maybe like, wow, like how did you get, I mean, I went to your YouTube channel. I saw that, you know, you have videos that, you know, you put up, I think 10, 11 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but it, did it start well before then? Um, yeah, I, well, I kind of used YouTube as a, originally as just a place to upload um, videos of my aquascapes, um, but just in short form, just as like a, a better version of a photo and there was no there was absolutely no desire or motivation to make youtube a thing so this was back when youtube was first um coming up with, you know like 2005 2000, no, 2006 i think 2007 i uploaded my first youtube video and then it wasn't until kind of 2000 and well I, It's probably easy if I just tell you the kind of background, you know, leading up to YouTube, because that's mm -hmm. kind of, yeah, if, if that's okay. So, sure. um, and YouTube, we can weave YouTube into the whole story. So, I, I, I bought my first proper aquarium in 2003. Um, it was a uh, an all in one system, it was a 33 gallon, uh, it had built in heater, built in filter. And I knew, I, I've always had a a connection with nature and i knew i wanted to keep like a planted tank um and so long story short i i, I got massively in, into plants aquarium plants um and then i got bought in fact i'll go and get it right now i got bought this book hang on running for the book what is this book so i got i got bought this book um Nature Aquarium World Book One by Takashi Amano, which uh, is one of his first books. Uh, I think it was released in like the late nineties, and that I opened the book, and that just literally changed my whole kind of view on aquariums and what they can be used for. And you know, it just really struck a chord with me. It was almost like an epiphany because when I opened it up, you just saw these aquascapes, which you'd you know, you'd never kind of seen that kind of thing ever before. I hadn't. And um, I just knew that was the direction I wanted to take my hobby. And so I became relentlessly kind of obsessed with learning as much as I could. So this was like the early 2000s. And, and the information wasn't that readily available in the UK. So I was going over to the US forums. I was um, guys like Tom Barr. I became almost his apprentice, if you like. And he... Um, he gave me a lot of really great advice. He helped to set up the UK Aquatic Plant Society with me and, and the other founders. Um, yeah, and basically I, my hobby became my obsession and, and my absolute passion. And whilst I was doing this, I was in the Royal Air Force. That was my full-time career. Um, and I, I was kind of doing aquascaping as a side hustle. 
I was starting to write for magazines. I, I was fairly skilled at photography, so I was doing my own photographs. Um, and then companies started to kind of notice me because um, I was writing for magazines and stuff, and they were inviting me to do display tanks, display escapes for their trade shows and things like this. And I was doing all this alongside being in the Air Force. And then what happened was in, I think, 2012, 2013, um, I was obviously in the Air Force and I was in the, on, on a bomb disposal tour and my trade was a um, weapons technician and I was uh, trained in bomb disposal and I was on a, an attachment with, uh, with the Army <coughs> in, uh, in Afghanistan, in Helmand province. And uh, yeah, yeah, so long story short, I got blown up in a, in a roadside bomb and lots of other stuff happened. But it made that point made me realise I don't really want to don't really want a career in the military anymore. Um, but I'm really good at aquascaping, so you know why not go all in on your passion? And uh, yeah, that was the kind of push I needed. And so I took you know I took aquascaping uh, you know full, uh, as a full time career. Um, yeah, and that and that loads of, loads of cool stuff. But the biggest kind of um, yeah, one of the biggest kind of leaps in realizing that I could make a full kind of successful in air quotes career out of it was was using YouTube as a vehicle to help help it, you know, help that business model. So I went all, you know, I was kind of uploading kind of sporadically with no real strategy or, or real focus. And then it was actually when I met, um, I spent some time with King of DIY, Joe Mullen, he's like a really well known YouTuber. And um, he didn't coach me, he didn't really mentor me, but he just made me realize, actually, yeah, you, if you really focus on, on it, you can actually make a good, you know, a good go of it. So that's what I did. Took it seriously, was uploading regularly, you know, two, maybe three videos a week, consistently for a while. Had a couple of videos go viral. Um, I went, one of them was the Floristas Submersas, which is the biggest nature aquarium in the world in, in Lisbon, in Portugal. Um, and yeah, that, and then I started because I was becoming quite popular on YouTube. I could then approach brands for sponsorship deals and things like this. And um, yeah, and then the most kind of recent kind of sort of accolade, if you like, uh, is is the book, you know, and and the podcast uh, is a recent thing as well. And and so all these kind of all these things kind of come together. So YouTube isn't my main thing, but, you know, I have, so, you know, the writing, I write my articles and very grateful to be able to work from home, you know, with all of this, especially with the pandemic, because I was doing a hell of a lot of traveling, you know, doing talks and, and setting up tanks for clients and stuff. But with the, with the pandemic, obviously, I uh, have to work fully from home. And that's one of the reasons I kind of spent a lot of time and energy converting this space here around me into like a gallery area. And I now have uh, four Awaze aquariums and a, a Dua Paludarium, which I'll show you in a minute. And so that was, um, yeah, I had to kind of adapt the business model. You know, can't set up uh, aquascapes for clients, can't do talks, can't um, you know, do consulting. And I was doing a lot of work in Denmark and Germany. Uh, so I had to adapt and, you know, obviously do as much stuff as I can from home. And that's one of the reasons I set up these these four Awaze tanks to create content for Awaze for Tropica and still sustain, a, you know, a business model, still be able to create content for YouTube and, and all the other good stuff. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of it in a nutshell, my background. Um, should we take a look around the tanks? Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to. Okay, I apologize if my voice is a bit kind of, you know. I totally understand. I also understand if you have to be a little bit loud. I, I know that there might be people sleeping or possibly. Yeah, uh, my, my wife, it's just my wife actually uh, upstairs at the moment. But um, yeah, she's cool. She understands. She's very supportive, actually. So yeah, that's actually probably the biggest reason I'm... Uh, allowed to do what I do is because I have the support from my wife actually so I should give some credit to her absolutely yeah okay so um oh, I don't know where to let's start off with what we can see right now mm -hmm. uh let's just drive behind the camera oops sorry about that okay so um 
Is that does that look okay in the shot? Yeah, uh, maybe a little bit lower. Uh, I guess uh, some of the the groundscape is a little bit um, cut off. But okay, let me just see if I can. Uh... Oh, okay, I can see what you're seeing now. There we go. Yeah, uh, is that more central now? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. So the uh, let's try and keep that nice and stable. Let's get a bit closer. In fact, so this is an Awaze style line one two five. So Awaze are a well known pond brand, and they've got a, a aquarium range that come into the US soon as well. Mm. Um, so they're lidded tanks. So mm. I used to just use rimless. Um, but with loads of evaporation, jumping fish, right. energy bills, um, you know, actually lids are quite a cool thing sometimes. <laughs> and so I've actually used the, the kind of deliberately used the black trim of, of the tank and cabinet and, it, and I've hung this kind of piece of moss art above it, which has got the black around it as well. And that's a good lesson, you know, trying to blend in your actual whole aquarium system with your living space if you can. Oh, wow. Instead of just you know having a you know aquarium putting it in a random place, you know you actually consider how it blends in with your living space to create like a coherent kind of theme. Um, so yeah, this is a twenty. This is a thirty gallon, and uh, it's I've been escaped a few months. It's actually uh, really the most interesting thing I think about this is all the plants that are in here. So some of these are really rare. Um, I don't know if you've got any plant geeks among us, but this one here, for instance, this is a Nubius needle leaf. Ooh. Uh, so the leaves are like less than a quarter of an inch uh, wide and about a quarter of an inch long. Um, and then we have a Nubius mini coin as well here, right in the center of the screen. Again, these, these leaves are about a quarter of an inch diameter. So I really like to use fine textured plants. I think it adds a really nice sense of scale. This is a trident fern. Most of you have probably seen good old trident fern. But over here, we have some other ferns which are quite rare. So this is a this is a variety of needle leaf fern that you can see. And then behind that, I don't know if you can see the quite pale leaves of the microsorum. One of them is quite orange. Um, so this is like a, a, a some sort of orange leaf variety. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of it. And then there's two or three kind of smaller, petite, mini, mini species of microsorum down here as well. Wow. Uh, so this is a bit more just a farm tank, really. Nothing. It's not really a special aquascape. It's not really got any kind of purpose behind it in terms of creating a visual thing. It's just more to grow some rarer plants and mm. just sort of play around. It's CO2 injected. I try, I try to CO2 to inject most of my planted tanks if I can. I just find it gives you the absolute, you know, the best results. You are a true disciple of Tom Barr, then. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, although I don't, we had I don't Tom uh, a, a couple uh, months ago, and yeah, he was just like, "Gotta go for it." <laughs> yeah, I def <clears throat> yeah, I appreciate non CO two tanks, but they're just um, they're a little bit more limiting, obviously. Mm. Uh, but the good thing about CO two is you can still use it in a kind of low because this is a low light tank. Really, it's not it's not very high lighting. It's only got two twelve watt tubes. Both mm. LED tubes above it. I'm going to show you them right now, actually. So, yeah, it's just got two of these. Oh. And, um, yeah, it's not high light at all. But the CA2, especially when you're using um, sort of low to moderate light and CA2, I find this gets you really kind of nice, healthy, robust, but slow and steady growth. And, it's, you know, mm. you're going to be much more uh, algae uh, risk free as well mm. the basically lower light you go so the fish in here are real mix these are just sort of leftovers from scapes that i haven't had the heart to kind of rehome or take back to the store so they're just kind of um yeah just a random mix really the other tanks have got a more of a sort of deliberate choice of fish but oh we have a question about this tank uh, they're wondering what is the filter uh for this tank yeah is sure yeah so external canister this is the uh Awaze biomaster um, I use these on almost all my tanks now. Um, they have a, a built-in heater here, mm. and then they have a, a quick-release filter here. Uh, so this is a quick-release pre-filter, so you don't actually have to take the whole thing apart 
uh, to clean it, you just unclip this, take this to your faucet or your sink, clean it under tap water because it's just mechanical media, and then put it back again. It only takes you a couple of minutes, and then that's the filter maintained. So, yeah, they're really good filters for those that don't know or why they they are available in the US now. They're quite they're quite a popular external canister. Okay. Okay, so that's that's the thirty gallon. Yeah, it's not it's like I said, it's not like a scape done for visual, you know, kind of artistic purposes. It's more of a farm tank. It's actually got lots of shrimp breeding in here as well. Mm. Um, I love cherry shrimp, and I have hard tap water, so the Neocaridina species are they just re really do well in here. And I, will admit, I I saw some of your previous videos, and so I do notice that you changed this tank. Uh, because I remember you, I think you had a potted plant in the middle of this before. Yeah. Yeah. I had some reds. Uh, I did have some red ounce and anthera behind. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I, yeah, I just fancy the change. And also I'm not really a big fan of ounce and anthera. I find it, I just find it a bit too kind of gaudy, you know, kind of mm -hmm. high impact. So I'm not, I don't actually use a lot of red in, in my aquariums. I'm more of a green kind of guy. So yeah, it's um, it has changed a little bit, but yeah, like I say, now it's just more used to to farm out these 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 rarer kind of ferns and anubias. I'm a huge fan of of epiphyte plants, you know, Microsorum, anubias, Buca philandra. There's a bit of Buca philandra there. Yes, somebody was actually like saying, "Is that Buca philandra in the back?" Yeah, it is, and I don't know what the species is, so don't ask. <laughs> 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 I know um, they have so many. Okay. So this this is interesting. This is moss art. So this is actually um this is preserved moss. It's got different species of moss on there, but it's like in a dormant state, so it doesn't grow or die. Oh okay. uh, and it and it uh, it's this zero is maintenance. Great. This is zero maintenance. You don't need to mist it. Okay. And yeah, this is uh over a year old now and it was a, a wedding present. Um for me and my wife so yeah mm. okay so this is my 20 gallon so this is an awaze style line 885 so this is the 125 this is the 85 mm -hmm. um it, it, it refers to the liters so oh, okay the, the number is what it is but this is a 20 gallon for, for the uh, yeah, few, thank you yes uh, we're always uh hard to calculate our, our <laughs> yeah. versions here so um this is a little bit taller it's obviously in the white finish, so quite a modern kind of style. Um, again, it's got the lids, and again, it's just got two LED tubes on it, so it's not not highlighting at all. Uh, it's, these these slide back, and and the whole light lifts off and moves backwards and forwards for maintenance. So really easy, really nice, really nice to use. And um, uh, someone was asking like uh, about the CO two, like how do you inject? Do you have, like, they saw only one tank. So is it yeah. injected to both tanks? Yeah, yeah. So I've got this um, this regulator from Green Leaf Aquariums. You guys have probably heard of those guys. And it has a split manifold there. So I have two two outlets. So that one, the bubble counter goes to the right, and then the one that goes to the left. Mm. Uh, this is a six-pound bottle. And I've got a local aquascaping store that uh, does does uh, refills. So, yeah. How how long uh, how long does it usually last you? Um, that that months. bottle there will probably last six months. No, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's say, yeah, between four and six months probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's probably only about thirty bucks for a refill. So it's not expensive. The biggest outlay is the actual regulator here. This is the most expensive part. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the part that you need to invest in because this is the most important part. It's the most kind of, you know, we're dealing with a thousand PSI or so of, of high pressure gas here. And then it needs to be controlled and, and brought down to a safe pressure using the regulator. So, you know, long story short, you know, invest in a good regulator if you can afford it. Yeah. Right is my advice because it's you know you're dealing with like lethal pressures um so yeah this is the scape this has been running about eight months now and this was actually originally escaped for 
Um, have you guys heard of the meditation app called Headspace? Uh, I'm not that familiar. I haven't been doing uh, too much meditating, <laughs> fortunately. Yeah. So there's a well-known app. I think it's got about 15 million users uh, worldwide uh, called Headspace, and they commissioned me to do a, a escape, but film it all, like the process, and talk about it. And they made it into a um, like a three-minute video um, on for their for their app. So that was really cool. Uh, and I kept it going because um, I really liked it, and it's kind of evolved, and I've made little changes over the weeks and months. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's, it's a really quite low maintenance, uh, quite high impact scape. It's only got three or four plant species in there. So we've got the Staragyni weapons here mm -hmm. and along here and here. And then this just does really well in here because we've got the combination of relatively low light CO2 injection. It just really enjoys this environment and goes really super nice and compact, as you can see. Mm -hmm. This responds really well to quite trimming, quite hard trimming. And then everywhere you trim from it will grow two new side shoots and this will promote like the really nice dense bushy growth. So in the back there we've got Cryptocorini Wender TI uh, no sorry, Cryptocorini Becca TI Oh, okay. So this is really nice. And you've got that really nice uh, like leaf shine, we call that. I mean you know your crypts are really happy. And they've got shiny leaves. I love my crypts. They're just really low maintenance. You just put them in the tank and just let them grow, basically. Yeah. Uh, they, do you do a lot of trimming? I found, like, the you know, with CO2, they really love it, and they just really yeah, start. I, I, I tend to stick to plants that don't need trimming so often, so I tend to avoid using a lot of stem plants these days. Mm -hmm. um, the Staragyni in here is relatively slow growing because we've got the, the only got the low kind of lighting level. Mm -hmm. and so yeah that's the only thing that will need trimming in here anytime soon um i have thinned out the trident fern once or twice because it's starting to mm -hmm. as you can see starting to overtake a little bit and i've got some anubis petite in there as well so yeah, really really simple layout but um oh and there's some ricardia this uh liverwort it's like a moss it's actually a liverwort is it just growing right on the wood yeah this is actually a portion of um my friend uh, owns my local aquascaping store. gave me a gave me a, a portion, and I've just sort of wedged it in there. Mm -hmm. So that will that that will gra gradually kind of creep across. So that'll look good. Uh, someone so, asked, "Is the light sold as part of the unit? And how does it protect it from humidity and water damage?" If uh, the, the the light, it. these are like um, they have a special IP rating, which makes them waterproof. So you can actually, this could actually be completely submersed in the water and it would still be safe. Oh, okay. So it's completely waterproof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it does come part of the whole system. So when you buy this, usually in the UK anyway, I don't, I don't quote me for the US models, but it will come with a light and it comes with an internal filter as well with a built-in heater. But I've upgraded to an external filter. I'm not, I'm not really a big fan of internal filters because they take up... Not too much room for aquascaping. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this has got a similar uh, filter system on here as well. Same thing with the quick release pre filter, the built in heater. Uh, water changes. So maintenance is, is really simple. Um, I do a 50% or 50% plus water change every week. I clean the, uh, the filter pre filter. Uh, every day I add a little bit of liquid fertilizer keep the plants really well fed at all times so it's really important to keep your plants from going hungry um i'm a big fan of you know a little bit too much fertilizer than, than not enough right again you know a disciple of tom bar <laughs> are you dosing daily or, or yeah yeah i dose every day i use uh this one here tropical specialized nutrition and uh, this is an all-in-one contains NPK trace elements or everything that you need in one bottle. It's just like a squeezy thing. So right. yeah, but yeah, I'm really happy with this. I'm going to keep this going for, for as long as I can, really. I think it can just be maintained almost indefinitely. You can just keep trimming back the Staragyni, keep thinning out the Trident Fern, the mm -hmm. Crips. I haven't literally haven't touched these in eight months. Just literally oh, let them yeah. do their thing. 
Wow. Uh, the Anubius doesn't need touching. That's just so slow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that'll uh, that'll keep me going for a long time. Um, moving over. This is my paludarium. This is my first ever paludarium I've ever set up, which I'm really pleased with. And uh, oh, someone asked, uh, should you be only adding liquid CO? Uh, I mean, uh, I guess liquid CO two only if you inject CO two, right? I mean, I or I don't know if he means by the the fertilizer. Should you only be dosing fertilizer maybe daily if uh, you're injecting CO two? Um. Yeah, probably. I mean, when you inject CO two, your plant nutrient demands go up because they, you know, they can you, you know, they they're using the carbon to to grow. So that everything they need more of everything else as well. So you can still dose. <coughs> excuse me. You can still dose daily um, without CO two, but just dose obviously a, a lot of a smaller amount. So you're looking at about a quarter. Probably want to dose about a quarter of the regular if you versus CO two non CO two is is probably about a quarter. So you could dose the same amount daily, but uh, sorry, you could dose daily, but a quarter of the amount, or you could dose probably dose uh, uh, one kind of larger dose every every week with your water change as well. Oh. Yeah, it's up to you really. And uh, someone, uh, uh, Eleanor, asked about: uh, Do you use a nutrient-rich substrate? Uh, now, yeah. someone answered that you use Tropica Aqua Soil. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. So I use uh, the Tropica soil here. In, in pretty much all of my scapes. Mm -hmm. um, this has got the, the, uh, really good nutrients in there. It's a good home for the roots. It's a good shrimp love it as well. It buffers the pH and the, and the, and the hardness, brings the hardness down slightly. And then in here, I've got like a cosmetic sand foreground, but I have got the uh, tropical soil in the background as mm -hmm. well. So, how, yeah. How long do, uh, I was wondering like, yeah, how long do the, the substrates last? I mean, when do they kind of, use up there um it, it depends on the plants depends on the system depends on um you know the nutrient demands it also depends on how much liquid fertilizer you're dosing because what happens is the plants can use nutrients through their leaves or through their roots so if you give them more through their root if uh if you give them more through their leaves and they take up less uh through their roots so you'll get less nutrient demand from the substrate so the substrate will last longer if you use a regular uh, liquid fertilizer. Um, one thing you need to bear in mind with a lot of soil substrates, excuse me, is that they kind of decompose over time and turn into a bit of a mud kind of sludge. So oh. just be mindful of that if you're uprooting plants regularly or you have any digging fish. So you just need to be mindful of that. But if, if you want to grow aquarium plants then in my experience you get the best chance of success with using a decent a decent substrate okay yeah. oh and kevin asks uh in the previous tanks uh are those neo cardina uh cherry shrimps or cardina yeah they're they're neos they're all neos yeah because i have hard tap water my, oh, tap, okay. water, my tap water is about uh 400 parts per million tds mm -hmm. yeah okay which is why i can keep these manawi cichlids no problem <laughs> Wow, I, I I rarely ever see like you know cichlids with real hard water with uh, plants too. So yeah, so this this is a, a great tank. I've really enjoyed this. It's been set. I've had the fish for two years now, and I had them as um, had them as juveniles. They're only about uh, they're only two inches uh, long when I when I got them, and now you can see that some of them. I mean, the biggest male is six inches long now. These are Chindongo saluzi. So these are a Malawi cichlid, a rock-dwelling cichlid, uh, one of the smaller variety, uh, species. Um, and I thought, I, I did have originally just rocks in here, had basically a, a huge pile of rocks. Um, and then a few months ago, um, I was thinking of new ideas for videos for Trop the Tropica YouTube channel, the Aquarium Plant YouTube channel. And um, I thought, oh, why not try to plant the, you know, the cichlid tank? So. Um, Tropica do these uh, aqua decor products, which are basically the plants that are re they're readily already attached. I don't know if you can see it growing from the wood there. Mm. These so these are grown in the in the greenhouses, ready attached to the hardscape, and then you can just literally plug and play. And so that's kind of what I've done. And um, yeah, because the species are all suitable, they're quite tough. You know, we've got the Anubias, we've got uh, Microsorum, different varieties. 
Um, the, the fish might nibble them, but because they're so kind of got mm -hmm. tough, waxy leaves and they're really healthy, they withstand any any issues. So um, one of the another things that I did is add a load of nearite snails here. And these yeah. are these are amazing for keeping the rocks clean. I haven't cleaned the rocks since I've added these ever. And I used to clean, they used to get absolutely covered in algae, you know, black beard algae. And they were really quite uh, hard work to keep looking, you know, from being an algae mess. Um, but these nearite snails have just, they've, they've grazed every single surface for algae. And it's... Uh, and are they just reproducing in there or...? The, the nearite snails don't. These are, uh, they actually have to have uh, salt water to breathe. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's about 10 or 15 in here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're just, they've just been brilliant. Yeah. They really earn their, they really earn their living in here, I tell you. Um, but I really like this. I mean, it's, um, it's nice to step out of my comfort zone. I've never, never skipped a, a Malawi cichlid tank at home before. And, uh, yeah, I just think, you know, people say, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. Then I just think, well, I'm going to try. And then if, if I don't, if I, if I fail, then at least I've learned something. If I succeed, then that's all really good. And I can share my successes. Mm. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, it's uh, rare that I've seen, uh, yeah, an African cichlid tank with so many plants and, and yeah. a lot of variety. I mean, you know, sometimes you're like, yeah, I'll stick one plant, but you, you, yeah. I've thrown in a lot of different varieties and yeah so so these have been in here for four nearly five months now so you know it's def definitely they're sustainable they're not just put in there temporarily so they're all actually growing in there and you know the, you've got some anubias flowers as well so if you can see that in the center mm -hmm. um so yeah the anubias are sending out flowers regularly um the trident fern is, is suffering slightly I, I actually do find trident fern to be more of a demanding uh, microsorum than the others uh, i do yeah do, it, do, it does really need ca2 uh, mm -hmm. and and uh moderate lighting at least to to thrive but it's it's actually it's not dying in here it's just kind of almost dormant and so this tank you wouldn't really want to run co2 because it would lower your ph right yeah that's right so yeah these fish come from a very high ph hard hard water area in you know, lake malawi rift valley cichlids um mm -hmm. So yeah, my my uh, I have hard tap water, so they're fine in here. But yeah, you don't want to be uh, you know if you can help it, you don't want to be low in the pH. I don't add any liquid fertilizer in here. I don't add any you know all I do is dechlorinate, do a, a huge water change every week, sometimes twice a week. I change okay. about seventy five percent of the water because they're so they're such big fish, obviously, and they're really um, they're really hungry all the time. Look at this. Watch them. So I feed them. Yeah, I need to feed them now, otherwise it's teasing, isn't it? There you go. Well, uh, you know, uh, us fish people always love a good feeding. So. Let me just put this up here, and you can just have a little sneak preview of the discus tank while I just rest you down here a second. Oh, I've seen those lovely uh, discuses in some of your videos. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I'm going to do a new video on them uh, this week, hopefully. Uh, next week, even. It's the weekend, isn't it? Uh, okay, right, ready for feeding. Okay, let's get a nice angle for you. Let's do it from this other angle. Yeah, I'm going to try and do this three hundred. Okay. No, I'm guessing this is not normally uh, feeding time for them, but it seems like they are ready and. Yeah, I've had to, I deliberately put the lights on a couple of hours before. We were okay. live, so everything's settled. Yeah. The things okay. I do for you guys, eh? I know. Thank you so much. Yeah, only lucky. <laughs> That's all good. Any 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 excuse to share my tanks with people? It's all good. I think that's a, an interesting thing, isn't it? It's about um you know, everyone's we've, a lot of us are really struggling, aren't we, with with what's going on around the world. But you know, at least we can all kind of have a united uh, love of something with aquariums you know it's something that can bring people together no matter your kind of political taste you know your religion or you know what, what your opinions are on on world politics you know everyone can uh, in this sort of community we can all be aligned on enjoying enjoying something and i found aquariums particularly useful you know during the lockdown in terms of having something to focus on 
you know that's actually uh positive and you know something that you can actually have a little bit of control over uh you know just the act of doing a water change or uh feeding your fish or cleaning your filter you know all these little all these little acts you know something that you're uh you know having a positive impact on and i've really kind of just focused on those little things uh you know during the lockdown because yeah i've just found it really kind of therapeutic i don't know about any of you guys but, uh, i think it's one of the most therapeutic it's got to be isn't it one of the most therapeutic hobbies out there i think um i i don't know how things are in england i mean but uh is it is it like is it easily accessible to get plants and fish and things like that uh well we know if Bre we've, you know, you've heard of brexit right so the Euro yeah, we've left europe so yeah the less we talk about that the better probably <laughs> oh was that one of the side impacts of brexit was the yeah we can't get any we can't get any plants yet no, from europe basically so it's really oh. re really annoying yeah <laughs> yeah so but that on on better news, let's talk about the paludarium. Yes. Uh, so this is my Dua Palada thirty, and I set this up probably about four months ago now, and it, it's a self kind of um, controlling uh, paludarium. It mists itself every so often. Uh, it has this like little waterfall effect that comes down, blows the mist all over the plants to keep them mm -hmm. keep them humid, and yeah it's, there's no livestock in here it's only 12 inches long okay. and it's i think it's 18 inches tall so it's really small if i should put my hand next to it you can kind of see okay yeah that's good for scale yeah um yeah i deliberately tried to use a lot of fine textures in here a lot of um there's a lot of actual aquatic plants in here although i've got some air plants those tillandsias i do have um all of the mosses are aquatic or semi-aquatic and then we've got some aquarium plants there we've got some anubius needle leaf and mini coin some hydrocotyle uh tripartita with some buca philandra some more and there's some actually some plants planted into the into mm. the bottom area there i could probably get away with maybe a couple of shrimp in there but i just don't think it's there's hardly any room so i'm just happy to keep it livestock free and just enjoy enjoy it i mean I, the thing i love about paludariums is that you, you actually get physically really close to the nature you can smell it you know you can really experience it um a bit more close a bit more you know more close than uh than an aquarium um and they're much lower maintenance as well so you still get this connection of make with nature um but almost maintenance free i, so. I get the sense that there's a lot of planning probably that kind of needs to go into it before you know the setup or um, no, you did you, I just together. Th this is um, yeah. I'm a big fan of just going all out and just having fun, and then and then just kind of evolving it on the fly and then learning. So I, I don't spend so much energy on the planning process. I I, I prefer to spend energy um, learning through that through the longer term, if, if that makes sense. So I. And unless I'm looking after like a specific kind of delicate species or something, I, I tend not to do so much research, just try stuff out mm -hmm. and then uh, learn that way. And that's what I did with this. Um, I, I was helped by my friend Ray. But it, this is actually set up in a store, uh, Escape Nature, which is a beautiful uh, aquascaping and a, a terrarium store basically in England. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm good friends with the, with the owner there, Ray, and he helped me set this up. Um, yeah and there is a video actually the initial setup of it and it does look a little bit different the hardscape's the same but a lot of the planting's kind of evolved over the months but and yeah, uh, we got a few questions here so uh and this refers to the previous aquarium but uh nicholas asks uh, how long will you keep this uh sickly tank going um good question because the as most of people have probably realized it's a little bit uh, a little bit overstock now um so i have a couple of options i can either thin out the stocking and, and give the give the fish away give some of the cut few adults away and some of the fry maybe mm -hmm. there's, there's probably at least 20 fry in there now as well Ooh. um 
Yeah, so I can just keep control of the population and, and keep it running indefinitely. You know, I'm a big fan of running really long-term scapes if I can. Uh, or the potential is this this tank here. This is a uh, hundred eight gallon. Oh wow! Okay. Um, I'm potentially getting a bigger version of this, a hundred eighty gallon. I could put the discus in the eight hundred in the new, in the big one and then move these into this one. So. This is a four, this is only a forty six gallon, you see. So this, okay. is over, this is over twice as big. So yeah, yeah. That's a funny thing with video. It's really hard scale wise to sometimes say, tell. Like <laughs> yeah. So this is this is the other two for scale. Yeah, yeah. together. And uh, you won't really get to see how big that is until we get closer. I guess. Right. And then you've got the other two here. And uh, Chris Payne asks, when's the next Iwagumi coming? Uh. I don't know. I'm not a massive fan of them anymore. Yeah, I, I just find I find them um, not as interesting in the long term. So when I when I do escape, I tend to want to keep it in the longer term. And I find Iwagumi is great and high impact and enjoyable to live with for the short term. But because the Iwa, be, generally because when you're setting up an Iwagumi, it's rock obviously rocks only, and then normally a minimalist plant layout. Once you've planted that plant layout and it's grown in, there's not much room for evolution and development in terms of the whole aesthetic. So I tend to get quite bored of them quite quickly. So this is why I tend to stick to kind of more, you know, hard, you know, woods based, you know, heavily sort of jungle style plant layouts rather than the the minimalist Iwagumi style. I mean, I did I do enjoy them and I appreciate the artistic merit and I, I, I love the the hardscape side of it and, and the whole process. But in terms of something to live with, um, it's not something that I'm interested in at the, at the moment, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have a couple questions about the paludarium. Uh, did <laughs> you have to make the hole on the side in the glass? Or no, that's, that, that's already there. And it actually comes okay. with a black fitting, uh, which you can, you know, but I just took it out because it's more minimalist. <laughs> oh, okay. So the yeah. unit kind of came with something. Uh, yeah, like, just yeah no, and, I, and I just took it out, yeah. And it, this this slides as well. If you want to get more, uh, you know, more ventilation, this obviously opens up for, for cleaning and maintenance. Mm. You've, got, you've got a chamber in the back there with a fan. But yeah, they're really nice. They're very expensive, though, um, unfortunately. Uh, but it's the ADA brand, so the Dua brand. Okay, so, ADA. Yeah. It's so well, Eleanor was wondering what kind of mister are you using? It, it... It's called the. Shall I turn it on? Let me just put you down a second again. Sorry oh, about, sorry about that. No up problem. A, up a bit. I'll override it so you can actually see it in action. Uh, there you go. You can look at. There you go. How's that? Is that a nice view? In fact, that the monitor on the left there. That's actually that's the YouTube stream. So you'll get a bit of a thingy going on. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> it's almost like there's a little delay. Interesting. There you go. All right. Ooh. Cloud forest. Yeah. So there's a fan on the top there, and then you've got this sort of cascading waterfall thing. And then you've got like moss. It comes with like sponges at the back that all kind of plug in to this sort of back wall. And then you can grow everything on it. It's quite straightforward. So do you need to mist, or that provides the water for the plants? Yeah, you need to, uh, yeah, no, no, you don't need to miss it yourself manually. That this is mm -hmm. it's all automated. You don't need to do anything. Oh, cool. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah. It's nice, isn't it? It is awesome. Uh <laughs> I, I'm I, it, that's like another thing. I'm like, "Oh, you know, the, <laughs> I I used to uh, like doing frogs and stuff and I can almost see myself trying to maybe throw some frogs in there." Uh though I can also understand that it, then it, you get you know, to deal with bio waste and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, is the paladurian uh, uh, glass or acrylic? Yes, glass. It's yeah. glass. Okay. Low, it's low iron glass. Yeah. And um, and uh, Nicholas Jacuzzi asks, uh, "Will you be doing an international aquascape contest this year? 
And where do, do you see the hobby going? Uh, nature style or other? Um, I don't, I don't, the answer is I don't know if I'll do a escaping contest this year. I'm not, my, I'm not motivated uh, myself by contests. That's not, that's not why I aquascape. Um, my, my passion is kind of in the education and the inspiration side of things rather than the competition. Um, but equally, I, I do massively respect the contests and the people that enter them. I think, I think contests are great because they really give you some kind of sort of focus and an end goal and, and motivation. Um, but yeah, I, I rather spend my energy on, uh, other things, you know, the projects creating content that, that's more, a bit more kind of accessible and, uh, beginner friendly. Yeah. Um, what was the other question? Where, where's oh. the hobby? How, where's the hobby going? Yeah. Or, or uh, the is it nature style versus other, I think is. Does it mean in terms of the contest itself or in general? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, okay, well, that, that, uh, let's, kind of, let's just talk about contest. So um, I just think it's just going to get more and more complex with the layouts. I think they're just going to get more and more intricate. And you will see a more kind of, um, oh, what's the word, uh, polarized styles. So they'll kind of go off even more in, in, in contrasting uh, directions. So the diorama style, which is like the, the, the recreation of a landscape scene and shrinking mm -hmm. it into, into a, an aquascape, they'll just get more, land, you know, more landscapey, more fantastical. And then the nature style will get even more complex, more complex textures, more use of kind of shadows and real subtle, um, you know, uh, nuances of, of uh, color and texture. Uh, so yeah, that's that's how I see it. I think, um, yeah, I, I can't, yeah, I can't obviously give her hundred percent predictions, mm. but um, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, the contests are really interesting because sometimes they can partly be responsible for creating new trends. Um, I like to see it like a bit of a you know like a concept car show. You know, go to the car show and they have the concept cars, and then that those can often be responsible for influencing you know a, a new a new trend in something and you can you can sometimes apply that with with the contests i, I remember when uh the first tree uh the first sort of underwater bonsai tree was done by philly polavera in you know the early 2000s and that kind of set the trend you know that was the you know kind of a groundbreaking thing of uh, of that kind of diorama style and then you had the kind of vertical tree trunk style uh, by this Russian guy, I can't remember. I think that was 2011, and then he sort of, it became like a real popular thing to do these underwater forests kind of scapes. So yeah, you, now and again you get this ground one groundbreaking kind of scape, which isn't necessarily super high standard in it, on it as it as it stands, but it actually is responsible for setting, you know, some new trends. So yeah, it is really interesting. I just realized I'm, I'm really rambling on. I do apologize. Oh, no, no, it's uh, totally fine. You're answering the questions that people want to hear. Um, and uh, oh, Eleanor asked, I think uh, she's asking, is the Mr. Uh, built in to your paladarium? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, co it comes as a sep you have to buy it as a separate add on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it is a, a plug and play for that. Yeah. Yeah. And then our very own Keegan Black asked, any chance we'll see a proper Dutch style? No. <laughs> 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 I can't do it. It's too hard. <laughs> yeah. Um I I I I I would like to do one. Um but again it's all about where do I spend my time and energy? What's the most where do I where can I get where can I give the most value uh in terms of you know what in what I do. Um and yeah, that style could be to be honest, I think I need a bit. I'm not making excuses. Well, I am making excuses. Um, you, <laughs> You're you going need... on for three months, right? I mean, I was like, there's a part of me going, what's going to happen with these uh, when you're uh, traveling? Well, that's a good point. Uh, there, is a gen there is a young guy, um, I think he's only 17 or 18, that works at my local store, uh, aquascaping store, and he's super passionate. He's really talented, hardworking. I think he's trustworthy, hopefully. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, um, yeah, train him 
on how to maintain my tanks. And actually, uh, I want to train him on how to photograph and film them because my idea is that he can still uh, create content of, of my home aquascapes and then upload it to the cloud and then I can still uh, create my own content from, from here whilst I'm working remotely as well. Wow, so, that is really yeah. multitasking. You'll be on the road and still like, yeah, you'll be able to produce content, you know, on the road. Still on it, mate. Yeah, you know, just a one van, one man uh, aquascaping machine. <laughs> yeah. Well, Wild Sprig has a question: Is that you're known for your beautiful high tech aquascapes? Do you have any low or no tech planted tanks? Now, I know that I, you, as you said, the uh, cichlid tank is one, right? Yeah, that's yeah. No, no CO two, no fertilizers. Uh, my wife has a. Uh, a little cube on our desktop, which has just got some uh, pearl weed in there uh, and some Anubias. That's the no water change, no filter, nothing, uh, no livestock, just plants. Um, so yeah, I do, I do enjoy that side of things. But you know, as someone that's um, someone that's just, uh, I'm just so, uh, I'm just such a big aquarium plant geek, but also an aquascaping geek. You know, the, the CO2 just allows me to do more of that more quickly. So it's a bit like a drug, you know? Uh, yeah, it is quite addictive because you know you just can get better results when you use it. Uh, and so why not use it? Yeah. And I'm just finally getting caught up with all uh, the final question in here. And then we can kind of zoom in maybe to if this uh, people want to take a closer look at this uh, lovely tank. Is that uh, in Europe, uh, Bio Eleanor asks uh, that uh, in Europe, biotopes are a big thing right now. So do you see a future for that? Yeah, absolutely. I hope so. Because I think um, I think I think we have a response. I think the hobby has a, a the industry has a responsibility to educate as well as uh, kind of just mindlessly entertain people. And I think um, biotopes are a huge part of that. And I think it's really great that they're becoming more popular. And I know that the the aquascaping scene as well is kind of take it, it is is you you know realizing the potential of new styles of aquascape because it, you know the biotope actual theme or you can really it can give you a really kind of tight focus of direction where you want to take your aquascape because it, 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 you almost well you should be for, literally forced to aquascape in a certain way so i really like that actually mm -hmm. and yeah any opportunity to educate and inspire uh and and teach folk about you know where these fish come from and, and maybe in a maybe on a kind of more important uh on a more important notes it can teach people you know about the kind of environmental impacts and the kind of um you know, habitat destruction kind of side of things you know with what's going on in borneo and palm oil production and and all things like this i think it can be yeah, really useful so yeah i'm pleased uh, that biotopes are becoming more popular and uh i'm really pleased that there's some really skilled aquascapers that are helping to communicate that message as well because they're creating these beautiful things to give you that you know initial visual you know attraction and then you're drawn into it and then you're like, oh, what, you know, and then you learn and you think, oh, that's a biotype, what's a biotype? And then hopefully it takes people on this journey as well. Yeah. Mm. And Nicholas Jacuzzi asked, will we ever see the flex again, George? No, I gave it, I gave it away to some uh, local uh, young, there's a young couple hobby yeah. that wanted to get into the hobby. So I gave, I gave it away. Mm. Yeah. So should we take a look at this before we oh, say yeah. Some cheerio? Yeah. So the fish are a bit, a little bit dark at the moment. It's a bit, they're a bit fussy because it's mm. like, you know, five in the morning here now. Yeah, it's very different for them. I'm sure they're not used to this. Um, but the, oh. these, these are Stenker discus. These are, these are bred in Germany. Um, they're used to hard, hard water. So I, I don't mm. treat my water at all. I just use, use my tap water. Oh, so that's amazing. Hard water. It's discus, wow. Yeah, yeah, these are bred in water with a TVS of 800. Oh my God. Yeah, so these are really, really far removed from their, from their wild cousins. These don't even really know their discus, to be honest. They're so hardy. 
sometimes they, they, they sometimes they're a bit spooky. Sometimes they let you touch them. Sometimes I can get my hand in there and stroke them. And other times they can be really fussy. So, but uh, I think they're beautiful. I love them. Do they breed in there? Yeah, they do spawn uh, every sort of 10, 14 days or so. There's a pair in here that spawns quite regularly. Mm. Um, so, yeah, planting. We've got some Amazon swords in the background. Oh, yeah, those are giant. And we've got some Anubius, a couple of different varieties of Anubius in there. Wow. And um, we just got uh, two or three pieces of really big pieces of bogwood that I've just got in kind of like a U-shaped layout. There's no stones in here, just the wood. Wow. I'm just going to turn this light off because it might get a we might get a better picture, hopefully. So how yeah. many discus are in there? So there's nine discus in here. Oh. Uh, it's 108 gallons. And some people will consider that's overstocked, but the, the Stenka guidelines, the people that breed it, this is their stocking guidelines to help uh, reduce aggression. Mm. Um, and it's, I've got two big filters on here. Uh, I don't know if you can see, I don't know if the lighting's any good. So I've got an Awaze Biomaster 850. This is their biggest one. This is huge. This is my hand here. And mm. then there's a smaller one down there. And I've got an auto, for, this is a bottle of liquid fertilizer. And, that, and that's dosed in every day with the auto doser. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, inline CA2 there. That's the diffuser there. And then on this in this side here, this is my pressurized CA2. And then uh, have it. This is a lighting controller, basically, so I can control my lighting from from an app. So I see two tanks. Is one just a spare there, or yeah, yeah, always got always got a spare. Yeah. <laughs> so other plants in here. We've got loads of crypts. I really love crypts, like I said earlier. Um, I, want, I wanted a foreground carpet in here, but I didn't want any maintenance. So I used the Crypt, mm -hmm. Crypt Parva, which is zero maintenance, literally for years. Uh, there's loads of other Crypts in here, probably too many to mention. Um, so that's it, really simple planting. We've got crypt, Crypts, Anubius and Amazon Swords, all like really classic plants, all easy. Uh, the temperature in here is, I keep it relatively low for discus. So this is 28.2, which is 82 Fahrenheit for you guys. Um, but because these are, like I said, these are the, the Stenka discus, they're really hardy. They'll tolerate a little bit of a lower temperature than, than other strains of discus. All right. I mean, this is just a, a really nice way to cap things off and uh, definitely want to be uh, respectful of your time. Um, we have one question about, I don't know, and this is a quick answer for you, is uh, yeah. have you ever tried the dirted tanks or the Wallstead method? Ask no. No, I haven't. No, no. I no. have, and I can tell you, it is. Uh, it can be really rough. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of nutrients you're introducing into that. Yeah, I've I've never really had the the need to try it out, to be honest. So yeah, there's there's some great tanks out there. There's some not so great tanks out there. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's worth a try for it, especially if you're on a budget and you want something maybe a little bit lower maintenance. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, what were the schooling fish that are in here? Oh, yeah, these are lemon tetras. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. Wow, they're just so still. Yeah. Do yeah. people want to see the discus being fed? Well, I, I, I can't see. Why not? Let's see. Let me, if let, let me get the camera in position properly because I mean, I'm going to get this. They've got special food, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, and that this will be the last parting gift for you guys in my hopefully they're not I think they're a bit I think they're a bit grumpy, a bit like me, because it's so early in the morning. Not quite breakfast time for them. Not quite, but I'm sure. Do you yeah. normally feed them like you know, uh, right when you wake up or is it more of I feed them I feed them three times a day. Uh, oh. that, yeah, um they have they have breakfast, lunch and dinner. <laughs> and uh yeah I, I actually feed them quite religiously at the same time as well because they really they're intelligent and they know uh, they kind of get to expect they actually come while i'm working at my desk um they'll around about five minutes before we're feeding time they'll they'll swim to the end of the tank and kind of try and grab my attention 
Yeah. What is that uh, shrimp? I, I see like a couple shrimp that are. Oh yeah, well, there's there's 125 Amano shrimp in here. I've got to say Ooh, that. Yeah. Those are good sized shrimp. Th these are turbo charged because they've been. They all they do is they eat over the leftover beef part from the, oh. from the discus. Yeah. So if you just bear with me, I'm just going to get their food. Just one second. <laughs> All right, this is our final treat send off. Uh, as uh, we do want uh, George to, <laughs> to, it is 5 a.m. now, uh, his time, so uh, he can maybe hopefully get back in bed and catch some more Z's. I don't even think the, the sun's cracked out yet. Oh, they know. Wow, it's like they sense uh, something. Oh, wow, there they go. funny that the first ones to strike are, are the ones that miss but uh but this is beef heart i think that wow and then uh th those lemon tetras really just kind of come in for the scraps wow yeah so there you go so this is called, uh, this is a special beef heart mix, which is called Good Heart. And this is actually made by the, the discus breeders in Germany. And it's a special mix of um, lean lean beef heart mixed with a load of other nutrients and minerals. So they get a complete balanced diet with this one food. And that's all the tank, that's all the fish get. All the, all the lemon tetras eat that. All the, the Amano shrimp will eat the leftovers. And that's why I've got so many Amano shrimp in here, is to just keep keep the tank as clean as I can. And uh, yeah, and uh, I I think I saw in one of your videos that you're you do about a fifty percent water change every week. Yeah, at least fifty percent every week. Yeah, oh. normally uh, normally do a running water change, so I'm actually softening out at the same time as filling in. Mm. Um, so yeah, sometimes it will be up, up to yeah up to one hundred percent plus. Right. Yeah, if if I've got time. Um, yeah, uh, you know, if there's one tip for me with, with aquascaping, it's don't be afraid to do your water changes. You know, I do the, the bit. I, my my belief is the bigger and better, and the more free, more frequent, the better. Um, mm -hmm. It just flushes out all those waste organics, replaces, you know, minerals. Um, as long as the source water is obviously similar to your, uh, you know, the the aquarium water, mm -hmm. and you're doing that water change, you know, making sure the temperature isn't, you know, massively fluctuating, uh, then yeah. I've just found the more I do, and the bigger they, the bigger they are, the less algae I get. The better, the better the plant growth is, and the healthier the fish are as well. So, yeah, huge fan of water changes. Oh, awesome! Well, thank you so much for the advice, and thank you so much today for showing us your tanks. And uh, I yeah. hope uh, you get you 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 know catch some Z's. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks, thanks for having me, guys. Thanks everyone for joining. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone. Uh, stay safe and well and, and uh, yeah uh, just enjoy your tanks uh, enjoy the community and yeah have a have a good one and hopefully we'll we'll meet up at some point this year yes some, please let yeah. us know if you are ever in the area yeah okay cool you take care guys right. and uh, i'll catch you on the other side all right take care george <laughs> thank you. cheers guys thank you Bye bye